This was taken with the SV Boney SV240 filter attached to my Ascar 71F and ASI 2600MC Pro. This is a special multi narrowband filter by SV Boney called SV240. And as far as I know, this is the first filter of its kind that targets the hydrogen alpha range, the oxygen 3 range, which also goes into the hydrogen beta area, as well as the near infrared. So if you ever wanted your own near cam like JWST, this filter will let you touch the very short end side of the near infrared range that JWST looks at. Probably won't get JWST type images, but one can dream. So according to the charts, it has a full width half max of 24 nanometers at H alpha, 20 nanometers at O3, which also touches the hydrogen beta range, and 115 nanometers at infrared. The FWHM for infrared is 150 nanometers, but it looks like you can get data from a range of about 750 to 940 nanometers. Although the SV Boney website claims it goes up to 1100 nanometers, but you can see from the graph, if there's any kind of transmission, it's only maybe one or 2%. The SV Boney SV240 filter is currently on sale for $128 for Prime Day, which is a really nice deal. And in this video, we'll do a quick image analysis against my Optolong L Extreme filter, which is a dual narrowband filter. It's not a one for one comparison because the FWHM of the Optolong L Extreme is 7 nanometers for both the O3 and the hydrogen alpha range. So the signal from the nebula there is going to be much sharper. But I thought that would be a cool experiment anyway. Uh, and actually, a little disclaimer when SV Boney sent this to me, I thought I was getting the SV220. Uh, I didn't pay attention, which was the actual, their dual narrowband filter. And I thought that would be a good comparison with the L-Extreme. But when I got it, I was like, oh wait, this is not the same one. And I think that's an indicator that SV Boney needs to work on their naming convention. What do you think? Taking a closer look at the filter, you can see that it's kind of semi-reflective. You can kind of see my hand through it, but it also reflects my phone camera there. It has uh, some nice coating to it, and I can see myself in it. It's not as reflective as the extreme filter again that's much narrower and it came in this nice little padded box uh, I think it's a little bit too thick I, I, don't, I don't think they needed this thick of a box here the rest of them are like this including the other SE Boney filters so yeah it takes up space when it doesn't need to and one thing to know about imaging with this is that some cameras such as the ASI 2600 MC Pro have by default and UV IR cut glass in front of it. So you don't have to use an UV IR cut filter, it has one built in. So in order to get the IR range, you need to be able to use a camera that doesn't have that filter. And you don't want to stack a UV IR cut filter on it because then you'll lose the IR signal. So you need to use a camera that doesn't have that. And for my testing, I used my ASI 533MC Pro, which is what I had before SV Boney sent me the 605CC to test as well. Uh, this is still, I still have this for loaner. Uh, it'll go away soon, but you can see that from the reflection, you know, it doesn't shine. There's no like purple hazing here. And this, because this has a clear glass and not a UV IR cut glass. Let's take a look at what the images look like through the L-Extreme and the SV240 filters at different stages of NGC 6960 while I go through these steps. So this one is just a single image. This is stretched. So we can zoom in and we can see like some HA and O3 data here with the L-Extreme. And on the right side, we have the SV240. It's a little weird. It's like a lot of noise happening in the middle. I don't know where that's coming from, but it could be just the auto stretch that's happening in PixInsight. But just from the get go, we can see that there's a sharper signal from the nebula in the L Extreme than in the uh, SV240, but the stars look a little bit brighter. I don't know if it's as easy to tell. They look a little bit more shapely uh, or a little bit bigger, whereas the L Extreme doesn't. So remember that these were taken with the exact same camera and telescope. All right, so that's the singles. If you look at what the stacked image looks like, this is stacked, this is just auto stretched and I didn't do any kind of work to it. You can see that the signal, the HA and the O3 signal on the L Extreme is so much brighter, so much sharper than the SV240. And it also seems like it's, they, they both seem noisy, but they're just like different kind of noise. The SV240 has more green noise and more red noise there, whereas the L Extreme kind of doesn't. It looks a little bit flatter. Uh, just a reminder, these were taken two different nights, one after the other. So not the same 
viewing condition just to show you uh, and the SV240 did have some high clouds at some point but I tried to take remove as many of those frames as possible I still had got to about an hour of imaging now if we look at the starless image you can see the data pop a little bit more so here it is you can see the, the sharpness of the L-Extreme and the SV240 actually doesn't look bad it actually looks kind of nice the only thing is that if I look here, you'll see a little smudge here. This is the star that was extracted. So the L-Extreme has a lot of star halo in the O3, and the SV240 seems a little bit better. It's not as crazy. So that's one benefit of the SV240. But you can see the nebulosity is just insanely more on the L-Extreme. Again, this is before background extraction, so there's a little bit of a gradient here. So I do wonder if I missed a cloud or maybe like a really thin, hazy cloud that got into one of my subs. If we separate the signal, so this is H alpha on the L extreme and H alpha on the SV240. You can see that the wider full width half max of the SV240 bandpass, we, we can see a little bit less. Even though there's more light coming in, it's getting interference with, you know, the basically with regular uh, red light than the H alpha signal. So it's a little, it's a little bit weird so if, if that makes sense, but you can see this is the signal. Uh, you can see this is where the star is and this is where the star is. So these two look okay. So again, unprocessed, just stacked and HA taken out. If you look at the O3, O3 looks really cool. The O3 on this one kind of looks a little bit weird. You can see that the nebula kind of disappeared, but it looks fine. They, they're both very noisy. The gradient here kind of makes sense a little bit more, but again, more signal on the L extreme. And then if we look at, if I just recombine those into an HOO combination, you can see this is what it looks like. Again, the red and the green come back. This looks very similar to what the stacked image looks like. You can see the date detail here. super interesting now if you look at what the stretch looked like so this is with a GHS a generalized hyperbolic stretch and a little bit of curves adjustments I tried doing the exact same stretches on both of these just to bring out enough details in the, the background make the type background a little bit darker but you can always tell that it's it's never one for one but there's like lots of like noise here. I did do noise reduction again here as well, but you can see that the data on the LX stream just looks crispier. But the SV240 does not look bad. Again, the display could be a bad frame. I probably will restag this or reshoot this later on. It could be a bad frame, it could be a cloud or something, but this is what it looks like. It's not too bad. And if we combine the stars back, this is the the L extreme and this is the SV240. If we look at the stars, that, that big star there, the SV240 star looks so much better. There's no halo, but on the L extreme, this is one of my annoyances of the L extreme. It has massive halo, especially in the O3 of bright stars. So this is actually not bad. And this actually gives me an idea that I should probably use this on the horse head because with Only Tuck, I always have issues with Only Tuck having this massive halo whenever I shoot the horse head nebula. But the signal is much crispier here. I can see so much more detail here. It's kind of, kind of insane. But the SV240 is not bad for the price point, and you get a wider field of view, or sorry, wider band pass on both HA and O3. You get infrared. Of course, this did not pick up infrared because it was um, my 2600MC, which has an EV IR cut filter map class. But if you want to look at some that I took with my 523MC Pro, which doesn't have the IR cut filter, we can see the stars here. So this is a stacked image, not an individual image. Since I used my Edge HD 8 without a reducer, the star sampling was just way off. So this is just a final stack. And you can see that the colors of the stars are off. And that's because we're getting narrowband data from both the is not really you know, in the visible part of the spectrum. But 
the this looks great. This is like a really great view, and I feel like I can see more definition in the stars in the middle as well. I also tested this on the Cat's Eye Nebula. This one is a little bit rougher. I didn't have that much, that many frames to integrate, but this is from a Bortle 8 area. I was able to get some of the outer shell of the Cat's Eye Nebula. Uh, if I zoom in, it's a little bit hard to tell, but you know, the Cat's Eye Nebula has like a helical structure, uh, kind of like a double helical structure, double helix structure in here. I can kind of see it. I don't know if it translates that well into YouTube, but uh, it's too bright, but I can kind of see the ring here and it looks kind of nice. And this was what the, uh, SV240 filter and we have another galaxy here so I think this filter deserves a test with Andromeda and probably the Triangulum Galaxy as well not too bad here it is final look well due to weather as I mentioned earlier I was only able to take this out for a spin for two different nights I wish I had more time on it, but I think when M31 and M33 become more convenient in the sky, I wanted to use this and try and see if I can get some really nice star data from those two galaxies and see what it looks like. I also want to use this on the Horsa Nebula when it comes around because Alni Talk has been so annoying anytime I take a picture of it. But I want to see if I can use at least the IR, IR pass filter function of this and see if I can get a really nice image of Alni Talk and maybe mask that area out and get rid of the halo that my L Extreme filter would normally have. One other thing that I thought about is that this filter could be great on planets, at least, you know, some data on planets, maybe not RGB data, but I know some people use infrared uh, as well as methane to take incredible images of planets. You know, they get at least some data and they put it on top of their other RGB data to make some amazing images. So I'm wondering if I can use that IR filter, the, uh, the IR pass, portion of the wavelength here to get some nice images. So something on a test when the planets are more convenient. With all of that said, I do like this filter, but I don't think that it it's for everyone. I, even myself, I don't see myself using this all the time. Maybe every once in a while, I'll use it to enhance my data to get some additional data on planets. I'll see how that works out on some nebulae, on some galaxies, see what I can get. But I don't see this as an everyday filter. So for people who are getting into the hobby, it may be easier if you just go with maybe the SV220, which is the Optolong L Extreme equivalent of SV20, it's a little bit cheaper, where you get hydrogen alpha and oxygen three in true dual narrowband format, really narrow band pass, and you can get some really sharp, incredible data. And even though you can get some really nice data with this, it's as we've seen in the image analysis and the image comparison, the narrow band, the true or narrow band of the L Extreme gives you much sharper details, but this gives you some really nice stars. So whether or not you want to get this for your arsenal is going to be totally up to you. I gave you the information that I have, that I use. As for me, I think this is going to go back in its box for now, at least. I don't see myself using this as an everyday filter. I will go back to using my L Extreme filter. If I can get my hands on the SV220, I'll test that out too. But for now, I think the testing I did was sufficient for me to realize that I I don't want to use this all the time. When M31 and M32 comes around, I do want to use this to see if I can get some clean data, some luminance data. I want to test this out on Alni Tuck when the Horse and Nebula is around, and I definitely want to test this out on planets when they are more convenient. And if I have some good information to share with you, I will post about it somewhere online. I'll make a video of it. But until then, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. There is no giveaway in this video for this filter. That's a little bit too costly, but if you haven't watched my SV-135 review video, I am giving away one of those 721 millimeter zoom eyepieces, so check that out. There's still time to enter, put your name in the hat and see if you win. And one final thought, I have been behind on my product review video, so I apologize for doing three in a row. I try to space them out, not, or at least, you know, like every other video has to be something else, but as you bony send these products to me, a while ago. So I've had them for a while, but due to bad weather, health conditions, and other factors, I haven't been able to get to them until now. So I'm just trying to catch up. And I apologize if this is not the type of content that you'd like. And if it's not, let me know in the comments below. I don't know if you'd be even watching this part of the video if you didn't want to look at a product review video. But I have some other content coming up really soon, uh, especially updates on the serial scripts that I've been working on. And if you have any questions about anything I've ever done, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to join discussions on astronomy and astrophotography, check out the description below for a link to our Discord server. If you want to support this channel, consider liking the video if you haven't yet, subscribing if you haven't yet, 
and consider becoming a member on Patreon. I do have a free tier there, so you don't have to be a paid patron. I appreciate it in any case. Until next time, clear skies.